Welcome to today's episode of The Business Behind Your Business. I'm your host, Nicola Brunton. Join me as we look at, dissect, and pull apart the joys of being a small business owner. Hi everybody and welcome to today's podcast, uh, episode four. Today we're going to be talking about a subject, the imposter syndrome. Now it's quite a, a buzzword and I just wanted to spend a little bit of time kind of looking into the nuts and bolts behind the phrase imposter syndrome. Uh, if you're in business, I'm sure you've heard of it, you've used it, you've referenced it, um, you've experienced it, but today we're just going to look a little bit more uh, about what exactly imposter syndrome is, how it's classified, some examples and some ways to identify and move through it. Hopefully, first, exactly what is uh, imposter syndrome? There are varying definitions, but there are a couple out here that I've found that kind of sum them up quite nicely. First one is from Psychology Today, and it classifies the imposter syndrome as people who struggle with imposter syndrome believe that they are undeserving of their achievements and the high esteem in which they are in fact generally held. They feel that they aren't as competent or intelligent as others might think and that soon enough people will discover the truth about them. Those with imposter syndrome will often be well accomplished. They may hold high office or have numerous academic degrees. Or another interpretation is from the Harvard Business Review. Imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evident success. Imposters suffer from chronic self-doubt and a sense of intellectual fraudulence that override any feelings of success or external proof of their competence. And finally, I've chosen one from Lexico, which is powered by Oxford. The persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. Whatever the definition, there is certainly a common theme and thread. It's the feelings of inability or inadequacy. And I must confess, even reading that, those descriptions, I kind of thought in my head, you know, my God, what am I doing sitting here talking, doing a podcast about the imposter syndrome? It's, it's literally in my head going, you know, who wants to listen to this? Who wants to listen to me gabble on for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes about this? But here I am, uh, putting myself out there and talking about imposter syndrome. So it's a very real thing and it can't be sort of confused with other uh, forms of intrusion into our life in regards to maybe more serious things that may possibly lead on to or lead on from imposter syndrome, that feeling of inadequacy and things like that. Imposter syndrome can manifest as feelings of your own self-perception or the way that others perceive you. Recently I watched a, a brilliant video that I came across uh, on YouTube done by Canon. So it was it was recorded about six years ago, uh, but it was absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to include the link to it in the uh, introduction so um, you guys can check that out in your leisure. So basically what Canon did was they asked six different professional photographers to capture a gentleman uh, and he was introduced to them in six different ways. So he was introduced one as a self-made millionaire, the next one as an ex-inmate, the next one as a lifesaver, the next one as a former alcoholic, a commercial fisherman, and lastly as a self-professed um, psychic. Now, imposter syndrome isn't always about feelings. They can spill out from perception from what you project. And this is sort of what this video was about, was obviously not to judge a book by its cover, but when you meet someone for the first time, you might feel ultimately empowered by them or the complete opposite. You might sort of be overwhelmed by them or intimidated uh, by them and you may automatically adjust or edit your persona. I find this sometimes if I'm particularly networking or anything like that and if I'm not really in the zone, I don't, I'm not really feeling up to it but I force myself to, I sometimes, if I'll meet someone, you know, you may stumble with your words or you'll completely draw a blank. I love the situation when I'm in this. I'm often taken back to the scene from Wayne's World. Uh, it comes to mind for me where it sort of plays out on my head um, is the scene when Wayne and Garth meet Alice Cooper for the first time. And there's like a little switch that goes off in their head going, oh my God, we're in front of Alice Coop Cooper. And they both 
drop down to their knees and bow and do the, you know, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. And that sort of scenario runs in my head a little bit when I'm uh, meeting people for the first time, particularly if they're sort of, you know, academics or people of great standing in the community and things like that and they don't sort of maybe whether it's on purpose or not sort of project themselves as being sort of very welcoming or um, obliging to meet you I mean obviously that scenario doesn't doesn't manifest it just manifests in my head so in reality I hopefully shake their hand in a professional manner and I pray that I completely don't stuff up what I'm saying or fumble or fall into my intro when I'm talking to them but what I'm getting at is, is that self-perception sometimes filters out um, of you whether you like it or not and you can automatically portray a different person that may be captured like it was by the photographers. If you put out a different persona or perception that may automatically be picked up by the person. Imposter syndrome just instantly creeps in there without you knowing it. So there's a little bit of awareness um, that we need to be aware of when we are putting ourselves out there and talking about this and dealing with it. Do you think you suffer from or have experienced imposter syndrome? How do you actually identify it? Maybe uh, even as others praise your talents uh, you write off your success to timing and good luck. You don't believe what you've earned is done on your own merits and you will feel others will absolutely eventually realise the same thing. Some of the common signs of imposter syndrome are self-doubt and an inability to realistically assess your competence and skills, attributing your success to external factors, berating your performance, fear that you won't live up to expectations, overachieving, sabotaging your own success setting very challenging goals and feeling disappointed when you feel short. Still struggling to identify if you may be suffering from imposter syndrome? There's a great flowchart that I've found uh, and it's called Do You Have Imposter Syndrome? and it's by Dr. Valerie Young. So again, I've put the link in there in the introduction and essentially once you go through that chart and flowchart and answer the questions, it then leads to five defined types. Which one do you fall into? So we've got the perfectionist. You focus primarily on how you do things, often to the point where you demand perfection of yourself in every aspect of your life. Yet since perfection isn't always a realistic goal, you can't meet these standards. Instead of acknowledging the hard work that you've put in after completing the task, you might criticise yourself for small mistakes and feel ashamed of your failure. The next one is the natural genius. You've spent your life picking up new skills with little efforts and believe you should understand new material and process it right away. Your belief that competent people can handle everything with little difficulty leads you to feel like a fraud when you've had a hard time. If something doesn't come to you easily or you fail to succeed on your first try, you might feel ashamed and embarrassed. Next category is the expert. Before you can consider your work a success, you want to learn everything there is to know on the topic. You might spend so much time pursuing your quest for further information that you end up having to devote more time to your main task. Since you believe that you should have all the answers, you might consider yourself a fraud or failure when you can't answer a question or encounter some knowledge you previously missed. And the fifth one is the superhero. You link competence to your ability to succeed in every role you hold, student, friend, employee or parent. Failing to successfully navigate the demands of these roles simply proves, in your opinion, you're inadequate. To succeed, then, you push yourself to the limit, expending as much energy as possible in every role. Still, even the maximum effort may not resolve your imposter feelings. You might think, I should be able to do more, or this should be easier. For me, as a business owner and a sole trader, my imposter syndrome tends to seep in via the self-talk in my head, i.e. the the um, the Wayne's World scenario. I always joke to my husband that me and idle time are not best buds. If I tend to, if I'm not busy, I tend to overthink, overanalyze and hey presto, that little voice creeps in with nuggets of imposter syndrome. But what are some of the ways you can actually help yourself get through this and recognize those, those traits that we've just talked about previously? Well, there are five quite simple things that you can implement and start and the first one is build some connections. 
And that's a bit tough at the moment, obviously, with COVID going on and things like that. And there's, there's a little bit of toing and froing in regards to getting out there, meeting new people, going to networking events, going just being invited out. So connections can come in a, a lot of different ways. It can come via another family member. It can come via, you know, networking groups online, you know, putting yourself out there to be involved with webinars and chats and things like that. Um, it's about basically not isolating yourself and not having that self-talk uh, creep in. So you've got someone to share that with. So the second one is avoid comparing yourself to others. To be honest, this is a really tough one and this is probably one that I suffer from a little bit. Social media is wonderful but on the other hand it can be absolutely awful because you're constantly looking at what everyone else is doing and it can be your undoing uh, when it comes to imposter syndrome because you kind of think well okay they're doing so well they're they're hitting their goals and the rest of it but again that's our own self-perceptions of what is being achieved. So switching off from social media can be a good thing whether it's a timed event whether you purposely switch off from social media for a certain amount of time a day this will help in the, in the whole uh, comparing yourself to others break the silence this is a brilliant one um, so talk about it just like any affliction that you may have or anything like that you know the old adage, a problem shared is a problem halved. And it doesn't necessarily mean to be going into the nitty gritty about it. You can just incorporate it into a a one line on a social media post when you're doing it about talking about how imposter syndrome has got to you today and you didn't want to get out of bed or you didn't want to, you didn't feel like posting anything on social media because you thought you were up against it. Um, so just own it, I suppose. Own, own your imposter syndrome and break the silence. Talk to other people about it and don't let it sort of take hold and this is a, this is an easy one a nice positive one so focus on the positive I know it really seems really obvious and sometimes it's the obvious things that get easily overlooked and we can you know not see the woods for the trees but anyhow you focus on the positive and that's whether you achieve you know you recognize your achievements and the small things that you've you've done during the day or that week, or that month, whatever it may be, the stop, literally stop and smell the roses and focus on the positive. Number five, this one is brilliant. Embrace the mistakes and failures, but in a healthy way. So don't focus on what you have done wrong or what in your mind you think you've done wrong or what you consider to be a failure. Analyse them a little bit. As I said, embrace the mistakes and failures, but in a healthy way. There's a brilliant saying from Frank Sonnenberg, and it says, mistakes don't make you a failure, but beating yourself up makes you feel like one. And that's just bang on um, from my perspective. The takeaway for this is no matter who you are, whether you're qualified up the wazoo, whether you're from the school of hard knocks, whether you're self-taught, whether you're male, female, black, white, it really doesn't matter. Imposter syndrome certainly does not discriminate. Be kind to yourself. Reach out if you think you need some help or you need some assistance or possibly that the imposter syndrome is morphing into something more serious like um, burnout or depression or something else. The resources are out there. I will put some links in the introduction as well to some wonderful Australian-based helplines. Continue to recognise the signs. Be kind to yourself again and take one day at a time. So I hope for you guys that this is a little bit of a summary and a little bit of intro into the imposter syndrome. We all suffer from it. You're certainly not alone. Till next time, guys, stay awesome. Thanks, Nicola.